Hi, Sharon Durbin Graves, Painting with Acrylics 101.com here in my studio in Kentucky. And today we are going to do a product review on these gold Taclon brushes by Artsmith. Um, I got the, I picked them up on Black Friday at Joann's Fabrics. Now there was an entire wall of brush packs. I got this one because these are sizes that I use a lot and so I thought I would try these out. These are watercolor, acrylic, and tempera uh, paints. They are 1 4 3 8 and 5 8 They are synthetic flats. I've not tried them before at all. We're going to start off with the bigger brush. And I always tap my brush off into the water and tap it off on a paper towel. You want some moisture in your brush, but you don't want it sopping wet. You don't want water to run down your palette. Okay, so I just, I have yellow and I have some green on here. So what I want to do, I'm not going to use this one. This is from a different video and it's craft paint and I, I didn't really like it. So I'm, this is a student grade paint. It's by Artsmith also. Now, I, notice I'm holding it back on the back part. I don't, you don't write a painting. <laughs> you paint a painting, so your hand is back. And it's back that way for several reasons. One is to, um, for you to be back away from your surface. Uh, and the other, it actually gives you more control. I know it's counterintuitive. It would, you would think that if you were like this and real tight, you'd, you'd have more control. But what you would have then is a very tight looking painting and sort of amateurish. In order to paint in a more painterly or a more professional way, you need to be back on the brush. You need to stand back and so you can see what's going on. Okay, so I'm just going to do a straight line here. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try something here, a little circle. I'm gonna load again. I'm gonna push and pull. Come down and push and pull across. Push down, come across, pull up on that Edge. So I'm pushing to where you see the brush, bristles like that. Okay, and then I get up on the point and come across. Come down, get up on that point, come across. Lots of different ways to use this kind of a brush. And what you need to learn is I'm going to pull off some of that. You get a lot of paint that hangs out up in here. And so I pull that off and I reuse it. So I reload my brush. And now I want to see how flexible these are. So can I make a good leaf? Yeah, that's pretty good. Now, can I go the other way? <laughs> can I come this way with it? Okay. I'm left-handed, so I naturally go one way. And if you're right-handed, you will naturally go the other way. And so you have to force yourself to learn to use your brush in both directions. Okay, so I'm thinking, let me see what kind of a straight line I can get here. Again, I'm gonna peel that off and then pick it back up on the end. Okay, so can I get a good straight thin line? That looks pretty good. How flexible is that? Yeah, that looks um, that looks like a pretty decent uh, student grade brush. I personally like a brush with a longer handle, but I totally get. Uh, one of my favorite brushes is a short handled brush and um, I use it almost every day 
So now this brush that I just tried could also um, be that. Now I do like the soft grip things on my very favorite brush, my short brush. Um, like this handle here has that soft grip there. I like that because again, my hands are pretty arthritic and just that added depth width on this brush, it, I don't have to crunch my fingers up as much. How do you like that word, crunch? <laughs> okay, so let's look at the next size down. Okay, I, I already can tell this is not on here good. Let me set this aside. I can hear it. Can you hear it? This is not on here. Good. It's already turning. This brush will not last. Okay? It just won't last. Now, I can take it off, put in some wood glue, some hot glue. This is the reason that I tell my students, don't ever let your brush sit in the water because it gets down in there and it loosens that glue and pretty soon you're going to be doing this. But if you start out like this, this is not a well-made brush. This is not a good brush and it's not going to last you. Uh, no matter how much glue you put in there, how many times you crimp it, you can even drill a hole in it and put a screw in there, which I've seen people do that. Uh, but it's it's never going to be the same. I would not throw it away. I usually will use it somewhere, but it will never be a go-to brush for me once it does that. Okay, so, so that part is a fail. <laughs> um, so we're gonna, I'm going to pick up some of this um, heavy body uh, Utrecht uh, artist paint here. And I'm going to do the same things. Now if I spread... There we go, I can get it down to that wide. That's as wide as I can get with that brush. Now I can, let's see. So that's how thin I can get it. Let's do the crisscross kind of a thing here where we go across and down and across and down and across and down. Now, this brush set was less than $5, I believe. So that tells you, I'm never gonna tell you to buy the most expensive thing you can find, but you also don't wanna buy the cheapest. And because of the how that is loose right off the bat, I, I really can't endorse the brush. Okay, so I'm going to peel off some of that paint there. I'm going to pick up some green, and I'm gonna mix it with some of that yellow just for something a little different here. So I'm gonna see. I'm just doing a few leaves. Let me throw a little bit of water in that green. A little normally what I would do is I would take my spray bottle and spray a few places just lightly on my palette so I would have a few droplets of water and then I could pick that up I'm just touching and pulling and twisting to see what kind of marks I can make with this brush. How much paint does it take to load it? That's all I'm doing here. I just like to see what can it do, how does it feel, but this brush is never, again, is never going to be one of my favorites because of that um, because it wasn't on there good when I bought it. Okay, now here's the smallest brush in the pack. It's a 1 fourth inch, tapping it in the uh, water, tapping it off on the paper towel. And I'm gonna, again, pick up the Utrecht paint. Okay, so now here's as wide as I can get with that. 
okay so if you push it down as far as you can that's as wide of a mark as you can make with it now really this uh, skinny lines that I'm gonna make like there they really shouldn't be any they're probably not gonna be any skinnier than that very light pressure as you do this this is a really good practice exercise try to get a straight line that's pretty even all the way down it's a really good exercise to do okay so as I pick up this paint I'm gonna try this again I go across and down and over and down and over okay so it's a small brush it doesn't hold much go across and down across and down across and down okay so now I want to see what kind of leaves I can make or what kind of small marks I can make with this small brush so if I were going to let's get us a line okay let's go like that okay so now I'm gonna come out here with some lines try to bend them a little bit so they're not all just little straight soldiers and now I'm just gonna put some leaves out here at the end and I want some up the middle because see how stilted that looks now if you'll just put some in here and maybe even just pick up some yellow to do that with to make them a little lighter if you'll put in different values your artwork will improve immediately <laughs> values are more important than color so there we have it I like the widest brush I don't care for the middle size brush at all this um, this small brush is, is okay I really like a longer brush so if I didn't use the two smaller brushes and I only use this one okay so now I've paid five dollars for this brush maybe I could have spent five dollars and bought one better brush um, because I, it, this brush is always going to be suspect even though it's not loose right now it will I'll, it'll always be in my oh I just heard it so yeah look it's wiggling too so save your money <laughs> maybe some of the other art smith brushes would be better but for five dollars now to have three brushes two of which are loose already and the third one i'm sure if i gave it much of a tug i yep there it went so uh, i'd have to say pass on the art smith brushes the art smith paint that i bought it's pretty decent but i would not spend my money on this kind of brush now when if you go to joanne's fabrics and you see um uh, an entire wall of the same kind of brushes but different packs i would scoot on down to some different um some other types of brushes uh to to look at them um, better because you don't want to spend art can really be expensive you can burn up a lot of money quick and you don't want to waste your money on something that you're not going to be using into the future i bought those brushes for this video just to see uh, if I liked them and if I thought they would be good for a student I don't even recommend them for a student because it's five dollars on brushes that wiggle right out of the pack not a good sign so anyway I hope you've enjoyed this if you did give me a thumbs up and um, subscribe to my channel I will uh, put a link in my in the description to my supply list of what it is I use now do I want you to run out and buy it all? No, I don't. It's just my list. It's what I use. So if you want to know, 
there it is. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Sharon Durbin Graves, painting with acrylics101.com. Let's paint together real soon.